With each placed seam the sewing process stitches together the threads of imagination, bringing dreams into reality. In this video, I want to share the process of creating a great piece from sketch to finished product. In this project I plan to combine two of my patterns, Amelia dress and butterfly sleeve, and make a peplum top that goes great with skirts and pants. I plan to make a peplum that is 20 cm long and add a zipper to the side seam of the bodice for more convenience. I often use the bodice pattern of the Amelia dress as a base and change only the design of the sleeves and skirt to create something completely different. I had two small fabric remnants left over from my last project. This is a medium weight linen fabric that holds its shape well, a great option for this top. Here are the modifications for the Amelia dress pattern to make a peplum top. I'm gonna prepare the fabric for later use. I give it a good press to ensure accurate cutting of the pattern pieces and to avoid any shrinkage later. If my fabric has a directional print, I always make sure before cutting that the pattern pieces are laid out in the same direction. Before I start sewing, I carefully consider all the steps ahead of time, so I don't have to fix things later and make the process as enjoyable as possible. I start by interfacing the edges to prevent them from stretching while sewing. I'm just applying a 1 cm stay tape along the curved edges and the center front. Before starting sewing, I use my overlocker to finish the shoulder and the center back edges. I'm transferring the loop markings to the right hand front by clipping into the center seam allowance. Moving on to the darts. I'm gonna pin them on the front and back bodice pieces. I'm stitching the darts, back stitching only at the beginning. To have a nice finished underside, I'm gonna tie the threads into a knot and then pull them through the dart. After stitching the darts, I'm pressing the waist darts towards the center and the bust darts towards the top. I'm just finishing the edges with an overlocker. After finishing the edges, we're gonna join the back bodice pieces at the center. I'm forming the pleats on the front and back peplum pieces and pinning them in place. The waist darts and the pleats should be perfectly aligned. I noticed here that the pleats formed an uneven hem, so I'll just trim this to even out the hemline. Matching the pleats and the darts, I'm gonna join the pieces at the waist seam and secure them with pins. After finishing the seams with overlocker, I'm gonna press the seam allowances towards the top. Let's move on to the loops. This is the part of the process you have the most questions about. I'll show you in great detail how to make them. I'll take a piece of fabric and mark the line on the bias. 
I'll cut along this line, then fold it by 1 cm and pin in place. I'll make it wider at the beginning of the stitching to make it easier to turn out. I'm going to stitch at 3 mm from the edge and then turn it back and stitch in the same line. Before I turn out the strip, I'm gonna trim the seam allowance next to the seam. I'm turning it out with a hairpin because I broke some of my loop turners while doing this. Please share in the comments below how you make it. The shorter the strip, the easier you can turn it out. Once the loops are cut into equal pieces, I'm pinning them to the right hand front like this. I'm gonna secure them in place with a row of basting stitches. At this point, we need to make sure the loops fit the buttons. I'm checking each loop individually to make any necessary adjustments after checking the loops, I'm gonna pin the front facing to the front bodice with the right side together. I'll show you the process of sewing the facing for the right hand front. The same process will be repeated for the left front. I'm checking the loops again, one by one. After checking the loops, I'll turn the facing to the right side and top stitch close to the edge. I'll turn the facing to the wrong side of the bodice and press it slightly. I'll fold the facing inward and press it slightly again. I suggest clipping the seam allowances under the front facing to reduce the bulk. I'm top stitching the front facing close to the edge. Moving on to the shoulders, just place the front and back pieces right sides together, pin in place and stitch. We press the seam allowances open. Moving on to the sleeves, I'm placing the top and bottom sleeves right sides together, securing with pins and stitching in place. I'm using my scissors to trim the bulk before turning it right side out. If you have a medium weight fabric, I suggest using a thinner fabric for the bottom sleeve. I'm gonna turn the sleeve to the right side and top stitch the lining. I'll turn it right side out and press flat. So we have a nice finished sleeve at this edge. We'll need a bias tape to finish the armhole. I'm using a bias tape maker to do this. I'll take a 4 cm bias strip and form the tape with an iron. I'm placing the sleeve and the bodice right sides together, matching the notch in the middle of the sleeve to the shoulder seam of the bodice. I'm stitching the bias tape along the armhole right sides together with a 1 cm seam allowance. I'm trimming through all layers half the width of the seam allowance. Now I'm clipping around the armhole to help the edge lie flat. I'm top stitching the bias tape close to the edge and then turning the bias tape towards the inside, I'll press the seam slightly. We'll finish the armhole after sewing the side edges. I plan to sew a zipper in the side seam to make it comfortable to wear. I'm gonna shorten my zipper to the desired length 
and cover the raw edge with a piece of fabric. I'm opening the zipper and placing it face down on one of the side edges. Securing the zipper with pins, I'm stitching the zipper a little below the armhole. I will sew this section to make the armhole neat. Matching the waistline, I'm pinning the other side of the zipper to line it up. The zipper should be closed. I'm also aligning the armhole and pinning the zipper tape in place. I'm securing the zipper tape with basting stitches as well. I'm stitching the zipper tape on the other side. I'm gonna pin the unstitched sections of the side seam and sew down them with a zipper foot. So now I have a perfectly finished side seam with a zipper. I'm gonna sew the other side seam with a 1cm seam allowance. I'm gonna align the bias tape with the side seam allowance and clip it like this. I'm turning the bias tape to the wrong side of the bodice, pinning in place and top stitching close to the edge. I'm gonna press the seams open. Let's move on to the neckline. I'm just making the bias tape in the same way as for the armhole. I could make the neckline right after the button fastening, but it doesn't really matter much. I'm folding the bias tape in half lengthwise and press in place. I'm stitching the bias tape along the neckline, right sides together with a one centimeter seam allowance. I'm trimming half of the seam allowance and then clipping the curved edge. To finish the neckline, I'm turning the bias binding to the wrong side of the bodice, grabbing the inner edge and securing it with pins. And then I'm top stitching the bias binding along the neckline, stitching in the ditch. Here's the perfectly finished neckline. I'm trimming the seam allowances in the hem area to get a neat finish. Making sure that the bottom edge is aligned on both sides, I'm folding and pressing one centimeter. And then I'm folding it by three centimeter and pressing again. I'm making sure once again that the hemline is straight. I'm stitching next to the fold to in the top. To cover my buttons with fabric, I cut out circles with a diameter of 25 millimeters, as my buttons are 10 millimeters in diameter. I'm making basting stitches along the edge of the circle. Then placing the button in the center and tightening it by pulling the thread. I'm securing it in a circle and cutting off any extra threads. It's time to sew the buttons. I'm marking the button placements with pins according to the loops, as my fabric has a print and other markings are not visible. I'm 
I do not cut off the thread each time. I'm just pulling it through the fastening to sew the next button. If you did enjoy today's video, please be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos. You can also give me a thumbs up, those are also appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.